Before I get into the main content of this video, because we are talking about fetal haemoglobin today, I just want to specify that this is not medical advice. I am not a healthcare professional and this is not clinical information that I am providing to help you make a decision on any medical treatments that you decide to undergo, right? If you have any consideration of taking hydroxycarbamide, please consult your haematologist. Thank you. Fetal haemoglobin. When you have sickle cell disease, there's different form of genotypes because sickle cell disease is an umbrella term for haemoglobinopathies, so health conditions of the red blood cells. So you can have for um, sickle cell anemia, the genotype is HPSS. The haemoglobin is not normal. Normal haemoglobin is AA. So in someone with sickle cell, when someone has abnormal haemoglobin, yes, the red blood cells, when they are produced, they are round. When they go through the process of oxygenation, they could carry the oxygen and take it to where it needs to go. But when the red blood cells deoxygenize, that's when they tend to become sickle shaped. And when that happens, that can cause the red blood cells to cluster together to block red blood cells and to um, basically cause a lot of pain, prevent oxygen from getting to parts of the body. All sorts of things can happen. The reason why hydroxycarbamide is a recommended treatment for sickle cell is because hydroxycarbamide increases the fetal haemoglobin within red blood cells. Now, fetal haemoglobin does not cause red blood cells to sickle. So with taking hydroxycarbamide over time, the fetal haemoglobin in the red blood cells increase, leading to less likely event of red blood cell sickling and causing pain crises and other complications. I hope this was able to basically teach you why fetal haemoglobin is a very important element of keeping people with sickle cell healthier.